welcome back to True Crime with Felicia. So, this story is about the murder of Dennis W. Day, who was an American actor, singer, dancer, and theater director. He was best known as one of the original cast members of the Mickey Mouse Club. After ending his career as a child actor, he went on to work as a theater director before relocating to Oregon in the 80s. So, before we get into it, I would like to give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone I talk about in this video. This video is for educational purposes and everything I'm about to say is just information that I found on the internet and compiling into one video. So, Dennis was born in Las Vegas, Nevada and then later moved to Downey, California. He started acting at age six, and after auditioning with his sister, he was a Mouseketeer for the first two seasons of the Mickey Mouse Club from 1955 to 1957. At age seven, he appeared in a minor uncredited role in the film A Lion is in the streets in 1953 with James Cagney. Dennis came out as gay to his family and moved to San Francisco when he was 18. Though he later told Rolling Stone's interviewer in a 1971 interview that he was bisexual. He continued to work as an actor and dancer, including at La Mama Theater in New York and in Los Angeles. Dennis married Henry Ernest Caswell, his partner since the early 70s, in 2009. Day and Caswell at one time ran a guest house for gay actors in San Francisco from the 60s until the early 80s. Dennis worked for the Living History Century, producing Renaissance and Dickinson's Christmas Fairs, playing Newington butts at the Renaissance fairs and also coaching other actors. They moved in the mid-80s to Oregon, first settling in Ashland and then Phoenix where they bought a house. Caswell also worked for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival while Dennis made and sold wine jelly and worked seasonally for Harry and David. The fatal encounter unfolded after Dennis decided he no longer wanted Bruda staying in his home. The two men had multiple altercations. Dennis had contacted police in Phoenix on July 15, 2018 to report that Daniel Bruda, the live-in handyman, had behaved violently towards him. Someone in the police department allegedly told Dennis that if Bruda was a tenant, he'd need to begin formal process to evict him. Dennis was reportedly last seen on July 17, 2018 
after Caswell, who has dementia, was admitted to the hospital after a fall. Bruda told police that Dennis told Bruda that he was going to visit friends and that he was taking his dog and cat with him. Bruda said Dennis left on foot, but the cat was found in the house and the dog was found roaming by the neighbor's house. Shortly after Dennis Day's disappearance, Phoenix police on two occasions spoke to Bruda, where he was observed on body cam footage having obvious battle wounds to his hands and forearms. Phoenix police also searched inside Dennis and Caswell's home three times that July. Gold, Dennis' family's lawyer, wrote a letter to the City of Phoenix, the Phoenix Police Department, and Lieutenant Jeff Price. That's when Gold alleges police inadvertently stepped on the deceased man's body hidden beneath the clothes and fractured his bones. The letter does not indicate what day's officers conducted the searches, but it claims all three were recorded on Phoenix Police Department body cams. One neighbor had a letter written by Dennis mentioning being assaulted by the handyman. After Dennis was reported missing, his car was found in the possession people approximately 200 miles away in Coos County who according to police said that, that they had permission to take it. In August 2018 the Phoenix Police Department received multiple 911 calls reporting a horrific smell coming from Dennis's home. One of those reports was made by a Mills on Wheel volunteer who delivered food to the residents. Friends began asking for help locating him starting in November of 2018. Dennis's family did not learn that he was missing until February of 2019 and only after a nephew in Oregon spotted a local news report about his uncle's disappearance. After his family learned of his disappearance, his case was featured on an episode of Dateline, and in March of 2019, his case was profiled on the podcast, The Vanished. It would take nine months and a cadaver dog for Phoenix police to finally discover Dennis's remains in his North Pine Street home, located just blocks from the city's police headquarters. Police finally found Dennis's remains in his home in April of 2019. As of April 2019, Police still had not determined his cause of death. Bruto was arrested on July 5th, 2019 by Oregon State Police, who took over the death investigation from Phoenix Police. He faces charges of second degree manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, second degree abuse of a corpse, and aggravated identity theft. Now, court records allege that Bruta told police that he shoved Dennis to the ground and later hid his body beneath a pile of clothes to hide Dennis. 
Bruda also admitted to police that he tried to air out the room containing Dennis's body because it smelled like death and at one point even used chemical products to clean the space. Now Caswell, he had remained in an assisted living facility after Dennis's disappearance and unfortunately he died in September of 2019. Also in September of 2019, a Jackson County judge determined that Bruda was mentally unfit to stand trial and sent him to the Oregon State Hospital. So according to the tort claim notice, Dennis's heirs have been irreputable damaged by the gross negligence of the Phoenix Police investigation and they filed a lawsuit. So Bruda was found mentally fit for trial in July of 2020. So he eventually, since they now found him mentally fit for trial, he will eventually stand trial. So they say that Bruda had been held in Jackson County Jail since his arrest, but on some front that's not 100% true because he did go to the mental institute and then back to the Jackson County Jail after he was deemed fit for trial. So they set a trial for August of 2020 and then they later rescheduled again for December 2020. Now, Bruda was ordered to be released from the Jackson County Jail while the Jackson County District Attorney's Office appealed a judge's ruling from earlier in 2020 that dramatically restricts the evidence they'll be able to present to a jury. So, then... The trial got postponed again due to all the COVID pandemic and everything that had happened. Now, Bruda appeared in court on February of 2022 in an unrelated matter. The Jackson County District Attorney's Office said Bruda is facing new charges of criminal mischief in the first degree. So, while he was out, I guess, on bail, he did other criminal things and got in trouble again. Now, the last thing I have on this case, it is a short case. There wasn't a whole lot of information on it. Um, but the DA's office said that Bruda's trial in Dennis Day's death could begin as soon as late this spring. That's all I have for this case. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, please consider subscribing. It does help my channel grow. Um, as well as if you have any kind of case or mystery or unsolved or solved case that you would like me to do um, a story about, please just comment below and leave me the information and I definitely will look into it and see what we can get going. And again, thank you guys so much. See you on the next one.